Hey guys, John here. Today's profit patch is called Mind of Dissonance. As we've seen before, the profit can sound velvety, it can sound dreamy, it can sound smooth or creamy. Now, this time it's going to be a little different. It's going to sound aggressive, mean, evil, vindictive, and just nasty, kind of like your ex girlfriend. All right, that was Mind of Dissonance. Now this one started off as a lead, and then for this type of arrangement, I changed it to an ARP, so you can really play it two different ways. So out of context, just by itself, it would sound something like this. So yeah, kind of nasty there. So let's get into it here. So let's go to our advanced section here. Let's turn off the effects. So dry would sound something like this. So really already nasty off the bat here. So basically what we're doing here for, our, for the first oscillator, this is gonna be a saw wave and there's gonna be no change to the core frequency here. So leave this at zero semitones. Moving on to the second oscillator, this is gonna be down one octave or 12 semitones and we're changing the find at negative 0.110 cents and we're also using a saw wave over here. Now we're not gonna be using any of the glide time that's down, but we are gonna be using the unison. And this is really the important part to make this patch really stand out, right? So the detune is gonna be significantly higher than most patches at 3.96. And that's just something really cool about the profit. You can really crank up the, de the detune knob here and it still sounds really cool. So that's something that's kind of special, I think, to this end here. Now under the hood, we're gonna be going on number three for the voice dispersion. So it gives it a little bit more, I guess, instability, kind of something like that. So don't overlook this little window here. And you can always go to custom and change your own settings over here but yeah so for this one it's going to be on number three so over here in the mixer the first oscillator is going to be 6.52 in the mix oscillator number two is going to be 7.52 and then we are adding a little bit of noise to really just get that hiss that just that nastiness really in there and that's going to be 0 0.960 <laughs> Now for our cutoff here, and keep in mind the cutoff and the resonance are also mapped to macros down here, but basically what they are set up right here is going to be 409 hertz, the resonance at zero, which again, that doesn't really matter because we can change this here with our uh, macros here, which I would su highly suggest you use these knobs as opposed to these up here. Now for the envelope amount, 3.88, keyboard light is on. Now for the filter, the attack one millisecond, decay one second, sustain one, and then the release four. Now for the amplifier envelope, attack is gonna be one, decay is gonna be one second, sustain at one, and then the release is gonna be at four milliseconds. Now this release is gonna be important because if we wanna play it like an ARP as we were doing now, that's cool and that's fine because we have a constant stream of notes going, so you really don't want a long release tail. However, if you wanna play this as a lead, you would turn the ARP off and then maybe increase this release a little bit so it's not such an abrupt end whenever you let go of a note. So I thought I would point that out here. So for this ARP specifically, we have it on, we have it synced, and then our rate's gonna be one over eight. And we're gonna be doing two octaves here. So when we hold down a note, it's gonna be bouncing with two octaves. And it's gonna be consistently going up. You can always change the order if you would like to. So that's basically what's going on on this screen right over here. So if we dive into the advanced setting over here, we're gonna be using a little bit of modulation here, but we're gonna to get to that in just a little second here because this is gonna make sense in just a little bit. So let's hop over to the effects. Now, the first thing that we're gonna be hitting it with is a comb filter for the multi-filter down over here. So let's turn off the reverb, the distortion, and then the multi-filter. So dry, it would sound something like this, what we've just been hearing. Now we pop on the multi-filter. Now this is gonna give a little subtle characteristics to this as well. Now if we go back to our modulations, we can see that the multi-filter one cutoff is gonna be slightly modulated by this LFO at, at an amount of 0.223. So we can look over here and see this is kind of basically just slowly moving and kind of just giving us those weird kind of swishy sounds. <laughs> Might be a little bit easier to hear if we disable the ARP momentarily and take a listen to this. Here's off. Kind of a static tone. Then we turn it on here.
it's like that kind of that pulsing here and that's going to be moving according to this lfo so it's just a little subtlety to kind of just really enhance that type of effect there so from here we're going to go into a distortion so it would sound like this off so no distortion and now with distortion So that's really going to make it nasty here. So this is going to be on a soft clip. The drive is significantly high at 46.6 dB. The out gain is going to be at negative 3.20. And the dry wet, as you can see down over here, we have another macro for the distortion. So we can kind of dial this into taste. But yeah, for all intents and purposes, right now it's at 36.2. And then from here, we're going to go into a reverb. So without the reverb just kind of dry, it's not really in a room yet, and now with the reverb. So for this reverb, the size is going to be 1.08, the pre-delay 0.003 seconds, decay 0.460, damping 0.593, stereo width 0.364, input high pass 44 hertz, input low pass is going to be 7,661 hertz, and then again this dry dry wet knob is kind of arbitrary because right now in time it's 33.2 percent. However, if we go down over here, we can we can see that this uh, macro is going to be tied to the reverb dry wet. So it really depends on where we set these while we play this thing. So with the ARP on, we get all that nastiness to it. Now let's say we want to do a lead or something like that with this sound and we don't really want it as an ARP. We would just toggle off this, uh, this arpeggiator right here and then kind of just increase this release to taste. have something kind of like that and then the release tail is actually kind of nice because it almost sounds like it's just degrading the signal make it even sounding a little bit dirty than it is so if we did something kind of drastic here for the release we get a really nasty tail like that as well so thought i would point that out here so if we double click this back to default it goes back to four milliseconds and then we toggle back on our arpeggiator and we're kind of back where we started so for macros, if we go over here to this advanced and then open up our wrench icon or gear icon over here, we can go to the macros. So it's pretty self-explanatory for most of this here. We have the cutoff, which is basically going to be this guy down over here. So as we move this here, we can see this knob wiggles here. The resonance is going to be the same deal as far as this knob here. Now, all the way to the right, as kind of mostly in the patches I make for the profit, I don't like going too high up because we do lose a lot of low end here. So that's why I would suggest to use these macros as opposed to just going to this knob because it sets a certain limit here that I, I felt if we pass this a little bit more, we're going to lose a lot more signal and we're going to get too much of a resonance boost and it's just going to degrade it here so i kind of set the range here for for that so uh so yeah now moving on to this distortion here if we go over to the second effects here this dry wet right over here this is going to be tied to that so we can just kind of add as much distortion as we want to so without it and that's kind of what i was meaning about the resonance here so let's bring this back down a little bit So with a patch like this, this distortion actually has quite an effect. It can make it really nasty. So uh, moving on from there, the last one is going to be the reverb. That's basically just controlling this dry wet. So all the way to the top, this is going to be at 0.428 or, or 0.42. 42.8% if we have our mouths so over here. Yeah, 42.8%. Yeah, and that's pretty much this patch. It's not really too crazy to make. Most of them in the, uh, in the profit aren't really too difficult. We're kind of used to a lot of options and a lot of different digital synthesizers. So when we have something like this, we're, ha we're kind of a little bit more restricted, but that kind of makes our creativity a little bit more because we have a little bit less stuff to work with and we kind of experiment a little bit, a little bit more. And on the flip side of that, we go to our advanced and we still have some pretty cool modulation stuff happening if we want to. And then we also have quite a lot of effects to choose from. So it kind of compounds both of those two different sides and that results in cool sounding patches. So yeah, let's play us out with Mind of Dissonance. Let's do a quick little refresh here. And here we go.
All right, if you'd like to get this patch for free, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. Hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.